For centuries, the Vikings were the scourge of the Christians in these lands. We are here in the islands of Orkney to discover about a saint who was a Viking and also a Christian. His name was Saint Magnus. In the 11th and 12th centuries, the Orkney Islands, now part of Scotland, were firmly under the control of the Scandinavian Vikings. They used these islands as their power base in order to launch raids on communities across the British Isles. They attacked Christians and sacked monasteries. The passing of Errol Thorfinn, the ruler of Orkney, around the year 1065, led to some power struggles with his children, Paul and Erland, who jointly ruled. Later, King Magnus of Norway, deposing the ruling sons of Forthin, took the islands for his son Sigurd, who eventually passed back the earldom of Orkney to Thorfinn's grandson Hakon, son of Paul. It is around this time that Magnus, son of Erland, comes into the story. Magnus was born in the year 1080 and had an equal claim to the earldom as a grandson of Thorfinn. He successfully petitioned the Norwegian king and became joint ruler of Orkney with his cousin Hakon. From 1105 to 1114, this arrangement worked well, but soon bitter jealousy of his cousin enveloped Hakon. The system of governance on these islands was one of joint rule, which was destined never to last long due to the animosity which developed between Errol Magnus and his cousin, the Errol Hakon. Magnus, potentially under the influence of the monks from Iona, had earlier adopted the Christian faith. According to the Orkneyinga saga, Magnus was a gentle and kindly ruler. Previously, on a raid on Anglesey in Wales, Magnus refused to fight and sang psalms instead. When questioned, he said, I have no quarrel with any man here. His kindly nature won St Magnus great favour among his subjects. This popularity infuriated his cousin, who saw him as a hindrance to his power. Jealous nobles influenced Hakon further to split the cousins and divide them. Their relationship began to sour and the fallout affected greatly the administration of their rule on the island. Neutrals wanted to address the problem and a meeting was arranged between Errol Magnus and Hakon during Lent. At this meeting, both agreed that they would meet again on the island of Egglesey to discuss peace promising each other that they would both bring an equal number of men. It was here on the island of Egglesey, around Easter time, 1117, that the two cousins met up to try and flesh out an agreement. Errol Magnus arrived first with two ships and waited on Hakon. When Magnus saw in the distance on the sea Hakon's eight fully equipped warships, he knew fine well that he was not there for peace. St Magnus, realising his fate, met the situation as he lived his life with peace and piety. Upon seeing the ships of Errol Hakon approaching in the harbour, he knew that his death was imminent. Turning to his men, Magnus promised that he would not risk their lives to save his own. Submitting his fate to the will of God, he began to pray devoutly. Once Hakon had arrived on shore, he quickly made haste for Magnus, who willingly surrendered himself. 
So Magnus, realising the dire situation, tried to sue for peace. He gave Hakan three options, that he would leave himself and go to Jerusalem, Rome or another holy place in exile, or indeed to friends in Scotland. Or even Hakan could maim, blind or imprison St Magnus and take the island for himself. The nobles wanted one ruler of Orkney and Hakan proclaimed that he would prefer to live and rule. Magnus knelt and prayed as Hakan ordered his standard bearer to deliver the blow. He refused. He then instructed his cook, Leifolf, to do the necessary. Leifolf was fearful as he respected Magnus. St Magnus forgave his attackers. Kneeling humbly before them, he made the sign of the cross. Magnus requested that he not be beheaded like a commoner, rather his skull cleaved in two. As Magnus prayed, bowed his head, Leifolf the cook delivered the fatal blow. St Magnus was martyred on the 16th of April in the year 1117. Magnus was buried where he fell, as Hakon would not allow a church funeral for the cousin. The spot where he fell was said to have bloomed into a grassy meadow. Years later, a church was built on this site to mark the exact location on Egglesey, where St Magnus was martyred. This summer, led by the Diocese of Aberdeen, the Scottish bishops held a mass for peace to mark the 900th anniversary of this terrible fate. This Norse church was built towards the end of the 12th century to mark the spot in Egglesey where St Magnus was martyred. The church has hardly been altered since the 1100s and this distinctive round tower behind me raises almost 15 metres into the sky, dominating the landscape around Egglesey. Although the church no longer has a roof, it can still be used and today we've been able to celebrate Mass here with the Diocese of Aberdeen, including the Bishops of Scotland and beyond. Although St Magnus was martyred here on the Isle of Egglesey, he wasn't afforded a proper Christian burial. His mother Thora pleaded with Hakin to allow her son a Christian burial. Thora, the mother of Magnus, successfully petitioned Hakon to allow her son to be buried at the cathedral in Bursi. In those days, Bursi was the centre of power on the islands of Orkney, as opposed to Kirkwall. It was here that the Earls had their seats of power. Over the years, Earl Hakon established himself as a strong ruler, and he himself converted from his evil ways after a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. St Magnus's corpse was taken from Egglesey to here at what was Christ Church. Devotion to St Magnus soon spread with people coming from all over these islands and beyond to pray at his tomb after a number of alleged miracles. But Bishop William, the first Bishop of Orkney, refused to believe in the growing cult and did not wish to promote St Magnus. One day, whilst in his cathedral, this bishop was struck blind. Realising his mistake, the bishop then stumbled towards the tomb of St Magnus, where he prostrated and prayed before the remains of the saint. Suddenly, he was miraculously healed. Soon afterwards, the saint's remains were removed to a more prominent place in the cathedral in Bursi, before many years later his remains being then transferred to St Magnus Cathedral in Kirkwall. Magnus was declared a saint by Bishop William in 1136. Earl Rongvold, the nephew of Magnus, ordered the construction of an appropriate cathedral 
to house the remains of a saint. And it is here that St Magnus's body was brought to this magnificent cathedral that was built in his honour by his nephew Roggenwald in the year 1137. It is believed the same constructors of Durham Cathedral built St Magnus Cathedral in Kirkwall between 1154 and 1472, the cathedral was under the Diocese of Nidaros, now Trondheim in Norway, until Orkney became part of the Kingdom of Scotland and under the jurisdiction of the Archdiocese of St Andrews. King James III of Scotland granted the cathedral to the people of Kirkwall in 1486. Over the years, the town attracted many pilgrims and the legacy of St Magnus inspired prayers and hymns, the most ancient and well-known of these attributed to the saint being the Nobilis Umilis chant. Nobilis Umilis. The ownership of the cathedral by the people is perhaps one of the reasons St Magnus's survived the dark days of the Reformation structurally intact. As the Protestant revolt spread around Scotland, Kirkwall too fell to the iconoclastic mobs who gutted any vestiges of Roman belief and turned the cathedral into a Protestant place of worship, which has remained in place to this day. As the cathedral is owned by the residents of Kirkwall, it is said that the predominant Christian faith in Scotland will be the faith practised in the cathedral. During this turbulent time, many saint's relics were lost forever. St Magnus, however, was protected within this pillar and not discovered for another 400 years. In 1919, during renovations to the cathedral, a box containing bones was found hidden inside a pillar of the cathedral. These are believed to be the remains of St Magnus. Marks on the skull indicate two heavy blows which correlate to the martyrdom account. Into the present day, and with the rise in technology, a team of anthropologists from Dundee University have managed to reconstruct how St Magnus may have looked based on these bones. This image was released in early 2017 to mark the start of the Magnus 900 festival and the launch of the St Magnus Way pilgrimage route. 900 years on, it seems interest in the saint is at an all-time high. In the summer of 2017, at the conclusion of the Diocese of Aberdeen pilgrimage, all the Catholic bishops of Scotland once again gathered in the Cathedral of St Magnus in Kirkwall and Holy Mass was celebrated. St Magnus is an example to us all. The legacy of St Magnus speaks to everyone who seeks peace in their hearts, but especially leaders who must rule fairly and justly. St Magnus was a just Christian ruler who lived his life seeking peace amongst peoples. And this is a legacy for us today.